Welcome to the Virtual Manager podcast. My name's Anna Russell. I'm an artist manager and founder of The Virtual Manager. Throughout my career, I've developed and managed several music artists from new unsigned acts right through to globally successful ones. This podcast is for all unmanaged or independent music artists who want to start, build or grow a successful, sustainable music career. This week's episode is the 10th of this podcast, and it's also the very first one of 2020. So I want to start by wishing you a very happy and productive new year. Today, I'm going to be helping you to map out your strategy as a music artist for the year ahead, the coming 12 months. Now, if you haven't already listened to last week's episode, episode nine, I would make sure that you listen through and do the exercises in that one before starting this one. That's because episode nine assesses your last 12 months in music and it's crucial to do this beforehand as it'll help you determine which goals you have and which action steps have been most effective for you so far. It also helps you identify where you currently are in your music career and this tells you what your starting point for this year is. Those, in turn, inform what your strategy for 2020 should be. Now, I recommend writing down notes for this episode, so make sure you grab something to write with now. I still like to do this very traditionally with a piece of paper and a pen so that I can look back at it at the end of the year as well. So take a moment to do that and then we'll get started. So my first question that I want you to answer in your notes is, what do you want to achieve in your music career in 2020? What do you want to achieve in music this year? Take a moment and brainstorm all the things you'd like to do. You might want to pause this podcast whilst you're doing it. So take your time to write down everything that comes to mind. Next question. What do you want the outcome of your work to be this year? So it's important to think about not just what we want to do or what we would enjoy doing in music, which is really important, But what are the outcomes you are hoping for this year? So if you fast forward to the end of 2020, what do you want to be able to say that you have achieved as a music artist? Which outcomes or which targets do you want to have hit? Take a moment to write that down. What are the outcomes you want to have this year? What results are you looking for? This should give you your goals for this year. And you want to think about having creative goals, fan base building goals, business goals, and possibly financial goals as an artist. What are the ways in which these goals could happen? Again, I want you to brainstorm. So for example, what are all the ways in which you could use to build your fan base this year? What are the ways in which you could perform more gigs this year, if that's a goal for you? Take a moment and write down what all of your goals are, creative, fan base building, business, financial, and all of the ways in which you think you could go about making these happen. Now that you see this page of goals in front of you and the different ideas that you could do to help you achieve those goals, which of them feel the most important? And in order to identify your most important goals, I really want you to think about which ones will help move the needle most? Which ones are most likely to lead to the outcomes you're looking for? Which ones will give you the most opportunities or the best successes based on the research that you've done from last week's episode? So which ones will get you to where you want to be the quickest or the most effectively? Once you've identified which of these feel like the ones which will most move the needle forward for you or those that feel most important, that really identifies for you what your main goals are for 2020. So your long list of goals might now have ended up as a slightly shorter list. Of that shorter list, I want you to identify what for you personally is your top one priority goal for this year. So this is the one thing that you would be really happy with achieving, even if all the other goals for some reason don't work out, which is your top priority goal for this year. 
Now, for lots of you listening, especially those that are newer or early stages artists, your priority goal is likely to be fan base building or something around fan base building. The reason I say that is that building a fan base is what ultimately leads to the opportunities, the deals, the collaborations and the monetization that you're looking for. Trust me, it all starts with building a fan base. And if that fan base is in place, all those other things tend to come quite quickly afterwards. So for lots of you, your top number one priority might be fan base building, but it may not. It depends where you're at in your career and what it is that you are working towards and striving for. But do just give that some consideration. Know that fan base building for lots of you will help bring the other goals that you have to you more quickly. So now that you know what your goals for this coming year are, what's your top priority and what are the outcomes or results that you're looking for in 2020, it's time to put your strategy in place. And I'm going to talk you through how to do that now. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to split your goals into quarters for this year. So January, February and March is quarter one. April, May and June is quarter two. July, August and September is quarter three. And then October, November and December is quarter four. Now for each quarter of the year, I recommend working towards no more than three main goals per quarter. Any more than that and you're not going to be giving yourself enough time and it's likely to feel very overwhelming. So split your year into quarters, quarter one, two, three and four. And then for each quarter, make sure that you have no more than three main goals for that time period that you're going to focus on in that time, in that quarter. Now, you want to obviously be logical about the order that you're putting those in. And that might mean a little bit of shifting things around once you see them down on paper. But ultimately, you want to end up with four quarters of the year with three main goals in each quarter. And bear in mind that some of your goals might stretch across more than one quarter. So it might be that songwriting is going to be your number one priority goal in both quarter one and quarter two. And then you have two smaller goals behind it for the quarter. That's absolutely fine. Once you know what your three main goals for each quarter are, I want you to write down all of the action steps that you think you need to take to achieve those three main goals each quarter. So look at the three goals you have written down for each quarter and then really think about the action steps that you will need to take to complete those goals or achieve those goals. Which action steps can you take that you think will lead to the achievement of your goals? Write down all of the action steps under each individual goal now. Once you've done that, I want you to now do something that is going to help keep you accountable for the year. So making sure that you are working consistently and productively to achieve the goals that you have set for 2020. And that is that you are now going to set a deadline for each action step that you've written down. So for every single action step that you know you need to take to work towards those goals, Set a deadline now for when you want to have that action step achieved by. Again, do this in a logical order. There will be some action steps that you cannot take until an earlier action step is taken, but set a date alongside each of those action steps and then commit to doing everything you can to achieve that action step by the deadline you've set. Now, for some of the action steps, you might not know exactly what you need to do or how you're going to take those action steps. So again, just take some time to brainstorm it. Think about how are you going to complete each of those action steps? Is it going to require the help of other people? Are there third parties that will need to be brought in to help you take those action steps? Are there services or tools that you need that maybe you don't yet have in place that you will need to get first before you can take those action steps? Breaking them down this way is going to make them feel far more manageable. And what it's actually going to do is give you lots of micro steps. So each action step might actually have a few micro steps to it that you need to 
make sure that you've done in order to complete the, the original action step. So again, think about how can you complete all of these action steps? Does it require any third parties or tools or services or research that you need to do in order to take them? And if so, what are the micro steps that you need to take in order to complete those action steps and achieve your goals? The last thing I want you to write down once you've completed the strategy and you've set deadlines for all of the action steps and you've worked out exactly how to complete those action steps, I want you just to write down for yourself, how will you know when you've reached each of the three goals in each of the four quarters? So how will you know when you've reached your goals? How will you know when you've been successful? What for you as the artist are the criteria that makes that action and makes that goal a successfully completed one. Just jot that down for yourself so that you don't get to the end of quarter one and you look at your three goals and somehow feel disappointed with the outcomes when in actual fact the outcomes might have been exactly what you personally were hoping for and what would be your criteria of success. So just take a moment to write down a note what are the outcomes you are looking for for each of your three goals each quarter? And how will you know when you've been successful? How will you feel satisfied that you've reached those goals? Write that down for yourself. You now have what is a very basic strategy and also a timeline to follow for 2020 that's going to help keep you on track, working consistently towards the goals that you have for 2020. And that's all that any of us can do. An important thing to remember about strategies for music artists is that they need to be flexible. So they're working documents. They're not set in stone. They will expand and contract as you work through the year. And there may be things that need to change because certain doors and opportunities might open up for you as a result of taking the action steps that you haven't yet foreseen. Or certain challenges could come up that you'll be faced with that, again, we can't foresee. So bear in mind that strategies have to be flexible. But what you're aiming to do is to work consistently towards it with the best of your ability and just amend and be flexible as things change throughout the year without losing sight of the bigger picture. What does this year mean for you? What do you want it to mean? What is it you're working towards? That's the big picture. The individual steps that you take along the way, all we can do is our best. So be flexible on that. Be ready to change strategy if a new opportunity opens up or a curveball is thrown that means you need to just adapt a little bit as you go. There's a full training in the Virtual Manager membership on how to set your strategy in place, along with a quarterly strategy worksheet and also a timeline you can use. So if you're a current member of the Virtual Manager, now is a great time to go and revisit that training whilst we are fresh into the new year and you've got the whole 12 months still ahead of you. If you are somebody that wants to go into strategy in a lot more depth as well, you want to consider joining the waiting list for the virtual manager or also possibly working with me one-to-one -one because strategy is something that I focus on heavily in my one-to-one -one consultations with music artists. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Virtual Manager podcast. If you found it useful, I invite you to check out the Virtual Manager membership site. The Virtual Manager is an essential resource for independent music artists who want to start, build or grow a successful, sustainable music career. It ensures that you have the foundations of that music career in place, then helps you to build on those to achieve your music career goals. With monthly music industry training, a library of tools and resources, A&R feedback on your music, access to live Q&As with me, plus an active supportive community of like-minded artists, the Virtual Manager is the perfect place to be for any unmanaged or independent artist. The Virtual Manager relaunches very shortly, so to get early bird access at the lowest membership price, join the waiting list now at thevirtualmanager.co.uk. Finally, please take a minute to review and subscribe to this podcast. It helps more independent music artists to find us.